the doctor is in. With incredible sports cars, an American classic, British luxury, and one interesting thing. You do not want to miss what's in the garage. It's time for a journey around America in search of the hidden gems, rare finds, and unbelievable collections in the garages of the country's auto enthusiasts. Each week, Mike Phillips will lead us through the amazing, fascinating, and entertaining backstories that make up what's in the garage, presented by AutoGeek.net. Today, Mike is in Palm City, Florida. Welcome to another edition of Auto Geek's What's in the Garage. We're here in Palm City, Florida, and I'm visiting a Dr. Dominique Zacchio to see what's in his garage. I see a smart car out front. That tells me he must like small, economical cars. Well, I see his garage door is already open, so let's go check it out. You must be Dr. Zacchio. Today, yes, I am. How are you doing? I'm Mike Phillips with Auto Geeks. What's in the garage? I'm doing very well. Nice to meet you, Mike. Nice to meet you. Well, first off, I see you've got not just one Ferrari, but a couple of Ferraris, a black one and a red one. Tell me about these. Well, I didn't intend on having two. The first one was the red one, the 328. And a deal came along where someone needed to quickly sell this. And I knew about this car for about four or five years before. And what happened next was I made the guy an offer. He took the offer, and I wound up with the 355 Spider. Wow, this is beautiful. You know, when I pulled up, I seen the smart car out front, which is a, a small economical car. Then I come in here, and you got two race cars, basically. Y yeah, the paradox. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you ever just take this out and stand on it? Yep. Yeah. You ever get a ticket? No. In fact, <laughs> not, uh, not yet? No, I, I, I don't get tickets anymore. Wow. No. Which one do you like to drive the most, this one or that um, one? They're both very different. Yeah. This is a, a driving car that's great on the highway, nice sloping roads. The red guy, the 328, is a car that you stay on all the time through all of the RPM changes. It's a hoot. Two very different Ferraris. This is more comfortable. It's bigger. Judy, my wife, loves this one because she actually has room. That one, you don't get in it. The red one, you kind of put it on. Oh, I see. Now, uh, what kind of horsepower does this one have? Uh, this has... Um, can you see the motor? Yes, we can. Let me go pop the bonnet. Sure. Wow, look at that. Yeah, uh, this, this guy is uh, well over uh, 350 horsepower. Yeah. Um, and all of it available. Uh, <laughs> so you put your foot down, the tires turn over. When you put your foot over. down, the tires will spin a little bit. Uh, it'll go, you can spin tires through four of the six gears. Wow. Um, and it has a top speed of 185. Oh, that's incredible. I have not taken this one to that 195. Fast? Yeah. No, well, there's no place here, and I, and I don't want to put it on the track. Sure. Um, my cars are street cars, and I don't really want them to be a track car. Well, now I look at this one. This looks kind of like the one that was in that old show with Tom Selleck. Um, Magnum PI. Yeah. Yes. It has that same look to it. It's real racy, look, uh -huh. real sexy. This is um, this car, the 328 GTS, was really the end of the 320s series. The first was the 308, then there was the 328, and in the and in the television show, this was the very last uh, model that they used in that show. Wow, this thing is just, it just screams horsepower. I love the way this thing looks. Uh -huh. This is significantly slower by about 25 miles per hour, 30 miles per hour in terms of top end. Is that right? But it's a hoot to drive. Yeah. <laughs> because it's, it, it, it just moves under you and it feels, it feels very nice. Yeah. And of course, this is a target top. So the this target comes top off. comes out. You get a little bit of wind, get a little sun. Uh huh. Yeah. Now I see right back here, you got a Volkswagen thing. Yes, I do. And it's a great story behind this car. Well, if you want to hear the story, then come right back. What's in the Garage, presented by AutoGeek.net, is being brought to you by Ragtop, exclusively formulated for fabric and vinyl convertible tops, available at AutoGeek.net. And by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. And by Pinnacle, science and nature in harmony, available at AutoGeek.net.
Welcome back to Auto Geek's What's in the Garage. Hey, Dr. Zach, when we left off, you were just about to tell me about this Volkswagen thing. What's the deal? These things, you know, they're just so ugly. Yeah, they're so ugly, you fall in love with them. They're, they're like a bulldog. You either <laughs> like them or you don't. They're quirky. This is a 73 Volkswagen thing. They made them only for two years, 1973 and 1974. I acquired this car. It was originally, as I'm told from the guy in Melbourne who had it, that he had bought it for his daughter and it was going to be a surprise. Well, the surprise was really on the owner, because when he showed him the car, she said, I won't drive it, I hate it. The car was in sort of not quite yet put back together, so I was able to get a really good deal on purchasing this one. Well, you know, a few more years down the road, she actually might have liked this car. It could be. Could have grown on her. That's what I think what happened to the old bathtub Porsches. Yeah. Well, could you pop the hood so we can see the motor? I can. What, it's back here? Uh, well, you want to see the motor? Oh, let's see. The motor's not up there. The oh. motor's in the back. <laughs> so we can get to that. But let me go pop up front for you. And how, did they, how did they sell <laughs> these things back then? And Volkswagen shops, they um, attempted to market these in a couple of ways. Uh, not the least of, this was sort of a... Uh, well, the motor's missing. This ain't going nowhere. Well, it's got a little tiny motor right here. <laughs> you know, the motor's in the back. It's a VW. Of course. And uh, maybe I can get this in there. Um, this is how they were. Yeah. And they were mostly made to be off-road. On-road, off-road, go to the beach. Um, this is the fun They even car. had a safari model. Sure. Which had a, a bimini top. Yeah. And they were done up in pastel colors, et cetera. These came in uh, sunshine yellow, uh, pumpkin orange, uh, uh, a snow ice white, and there was also a turquoise uh, version. Very interesting car. Very different from the Ferraris. Oh, yeah. <laughs> very different. Oh, very, very different. different. So tell me about the MGB GT here. The MGB GT is, is kind of an interesting story. My wife's friend, for many, many years, since they were in the third grade, had one. Jude loved this car, and about a year ago, this car was over in my mechanic shop, but it showed up. She saw it, fell in love with it, and further what happened with it, it turned out that the bulldog we have for Jude can get in this car the easiest of any of the vehicles we own. So, is that right? Yeah, this is sort it's of, low to the ground. It's low to the ground. Jump she right can in. hop in, climb yeah. into the back. And, and, and Judy's a little bitty thing, and the bulldog weighs 35 pounds, so it's getting a little bit too heavy for her to keep lifting to get the bulldog in the car. But sure. That's the story. This is a driver. She drives this back and forth to work fairly often. Yeah, this is actually in really good shape. You know, you don't see these on the road very often. Uh, not, not too many. A lot not of them are the convertibles, and this is, of course, the hard top. It is. Yes, very interesting. It's an interesting color, kind of a butterscotch color. Uh, yeah, well, most people would say it was more like something that somebody already ate and then <laughs> disgorged. <laughs> Well, you know, I actually, I went through a British sports car phase myself. I've had a couple MG Midgets, a couple MGAs, and a couple Spitfires, but uh, <laughs> never had the MGB. Can we take a look at the engine? These had little four cylinders, right? Yes, they did. Uh, let me go. See I just kind of thought mine were a little up. bit on the underpowered side. Um, How's this one do? This one does reasonably well. Um, it's not going to, if you want to pull that down and sure. connect it, you know where to put that one. Sure. Um, it's not a world beater, yeah. but you know, with a four-cylinder engine, it's got an overdrive transmission. Uh -huh. So once you get it rolling, you can throw it up into overdrive, and you can drive this puppy all Cruise day. down the freeway. So and it's it got does dual get carbs. about 32 to 35 miles to the gallon, so it's... Ahead of its time for gas mileage. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, absolutely. it looks like it's in good shape. I was always just impressed by how small the motors on these British cars are. It's like a little uh, sewing machine in there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. They sound like that sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Nun, 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 nun. Uh -huh. Well, you know, you've got the Italian sports cars, you've got the German thing back there, you've got the British sports car. Have you got anything from America? I certainly do. I've got a 1956 Thunderbird. Well, we'll take a break. When we come back, let's check out Dr. Zach's 56 Ford Thunderbird. Welcome back. Well, Dr. Zach, you've got a 1956 Ford Thunderbird. What is the story behind this car? Uh, this Thunderbird, uh, again, was one of the models that Jude saw it, liked it, 
and we wound up acquiring it. It was actually the, f uh, the, first, of, of the first two cars that we ever got involved in that were eco economical enough for us to be able to purchase and then plan on. I didn't have to do total restorations. I could make it a driver and enjoy the car. Sure, now this has got the porthole hardtop, which it is does. a very unique look to the 56. It's got the Continental the kit Continental, back here. And the Continental kit, That's I correct. actually grew up in uh, high school, one of my best friends, uh, his dad let him inherit his 56 Ford Thunderbird. So all the way through high school, I drove around in a white convertible just like this. Did it have a red interior? It had a white interior. A white interior, yeah. oh, nice. Now, I, I see there's a bear in here driving this car. Uh -huh. That's pretty cute. Uh -huh. uh, actually, this is the car that uh, Suzanne Summers drove in that movie, American Graffiti. You're right. Everybody, a lot of people remember her, the uh -huh. blonde in that, and there's a white, there's a white one. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Well, it looks like it's a good candidate for a restoration. It's very complete and in good it's, shape. It's all here. Yeah, and these are iconic, classic American cars, the 56 Ford Thunderbird. Now, I see another British sports car up here. So you really like the British sports cars. What's the story with this? This is a 1954 Austin Healey 104, and it's equipped as the M model, which was an upgrade from the original 104. Um, this car, right-hand drive. Yeah, notice that. It's yes, beautiful. it came into this country as a right-hand drive, and the history on it is still uncertain. We're not sure if this is an M or just the car that was done up as an M, but done at the dealership in England. My MGA had the same thing. You reach inside to pull a little cord down, and that's yeah, the door handle. Yeah, that's side curtains and a door handle, and you can't lock them. Yeah. The true British sports car, you have to suffer. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't have a British sports well, I car. I love the body lines on this. I love the, the chrome bead, in fact. Like a lot of cars, if they have a bead, it's just a piece of rubber or a piece uh -huh. of vinyl. This actually uh -huh. has the chrome trim. It's got the windshield that rakes down. That's a real interesting look. That was the race look that Donald Healy, the original designer and builder of this car, made sure was built in so it could be a car you could go from the street and to the track. This car is an interesting car to me um, because the very first sports car I ever owned was a 104 Austin Healey. It was also red, but it was left-hand drive, same interior, and it was a parts car. Yeah. And uh, a, a person I knew on Long Island at the time had it. I convinced him to give me his parts car, and I gave him uh, a car that was similar to Christine, oh. a 1968 Plymouth Fury. Oh, those are beautiful we cars. We traded out. Yeah. He took the Fury. I, I told him he needed a tow car for his other car, and I got this. I spent the better part of a year restoring the car, got to drive it for about five months, and the old story as it goes, on a rainy, sleety, snowy day, uh, a woman hit me and wrecked the car. Oh. My father sold the car out from under me, and I've been looking for this one since 1960. So you got your old car I back. I got my old car back. Wow. You know, I've, I've actually uh, buffed out a couple of cars that I were told were raced by Donald Healey. They are the really? Austin Healey 3000s, yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're very uh, beautiful wow. cars. A lot like this. Now, I love the hood. It's got the louvers. It's got the uh, leather strap going across there. Can we take a look at the engine? We can. Yeah. Now, what's the significance of this being a 100M? The 100M had a cold air box, which, if I get this open, Quick enough, we'll be able to do. Wow, this is incredibly great, great shape. I love the way this, this was looks. the This was the thing that made it unique. It was this cold air box that brought cold, fresh air in from the outside, brought it in, and, and then into fed the, the mix and fed the carburetors. The carburetors are slightly oversized by a couple of thousands, as are the pistons, rings, and everything else. So Healy made the M and which is why it got to be called a 100, is because this car was a 100 horsepower, 100 mile an hour car. Wow, that's a great and, story. And that's the story behind the it. The engine's actually pretty beefy for a little four cylinder. It's a lot, it's a lot. It has a lot more size to it than the engine in the MGB. As I understand them, they were originally a design that came off of a truck. So this engine by no means was a very sophisticated engine as the body design was more sophisticated probably than anything else. Yeah, well, it's actually, it's beautiful. It's got the wire wheels, the knockoffs. It's got a beautiful chrome grille, spotlights up front, headlight protectors for rocks if you're out there running just a little bit too hard. Uh -huh. oh, that's a beautiful car. And again, the three speed with an overdrive makes this a drivable car. Yeah, so it must be a lot of fun to take this out on a sunny day. It's a hoot. Yeah. This one and uh, this one only goes out on a sunny day. Well, that's beautiful. Now, um, 
Being a doctor, I think you'd have a luxury car. Well, yeah, we do have a luxury car, and she's over there in the other bay. Well, tell you what, if you want to see what that luxury car is, come right on back. We're going to take a break. What's in the Garage, presented by AutoGeek.net, is being brought to you by Wolfgang for long-lasting protection and a crystal shine available at AutoGeek.net. And by Low Car Performance Products, quality, plain, and simple. And by Pinnacle, science and nature in harmony, available at AutoGeek.net. Welcome back. Well, Dr. Zach, this does look like a luxury car. I love the two-tone, the maroon on the top, and the black down here. It kind of accentuates the body lines. you got to tell me, what is this? This is a 1956 Bentley S1. has a six-cylinder motor, roughly 160 horsepower, and it's got an automatic transmission. Incredible. That is just inc I look, at, look at the wood dash on here. This is that's absolutely beautiful. I, I bought this at an auction. Is that right? Yeah, when the uh, Roosevelt Bridge had opened up, um, I purchased the car at an auction, and it didn't run. And the people had the doors open on it, and they were going in and out, in and out, my chauffeur's cab, in and out <laughs> of the car uh, as if it was a pass-through. Uh, I really didn't go there for this car, but the car talked to Judy and I. Yeah. And at the very end... It said, buy me? We, it did. It kept saying, <laughs> buy me, buy me, buy me, and we wound up purchasing it. It didn't run. I called AAA, they picked it up, took it home for me, got it in the garage, and I called a friend of mine who works on British royalty cars. He came over, took a look at it, and he says, I know this car, I put it away, it belonged to Mr. Jones. He, I says, well, it doesn't run. He says, sure it does. Again, Lucas fuel pumps. Yes. Went underneath, adjusted the fuel pumps, boom, fired, and it runs. We did almost a total restoration on this car. The seats and all the leather and the wood are stock. We had to do the front seats because they, they got bad. Mm -hmm. The rest of the body basically wound up getting a coat of paint, and we did the bumpers, had them chromed. Otherwise, all of the other chrome on this car is as we got it. Wow. That's so just shape. the way it was when, yeah. I, when I got it about almost eight, ten years ago. So this is the kind of car you would pull up next to somebody and say, hey, do you got any gray Poupon? Well, no, but we did go to Mickey D's. Okay. Uh, we went to McDonald's, and Judy sat in the back with the uh, tray out. I drove up with the chauffeur's cap and gloves. We pulled up and said, do you have a 99 cent special? <laughs> Fun <laughs> car. We use it for weddings, uh, for, for the family, picking some special people up that haven't been on in Florida in a long time. We'll surprise them and pick them up in a Bentley at the airport. Wow. This is a nice, fun car to play with. Great story. I love the long hood. The trunk looks like it's big enough you could throw your smart car in the back call it a spare. We probably could do that. Um, we probably could do that. Hey, it's time to go over some tips and techniques for detailing your car at Auto Geek Show Car Garage. It's time for Show Car Garage. Tips on detailing your car to bring out the beauty that will make it show worthy. Brought to you by AutoGeek.net. We are Car Care. I have a special guest with me here again, Rick from Ragtop. How are you doing, Rick? Mike, how are you doing today? Great. Now, I thought you only made products for convertible tops, you know, a cloth or a canvas top or a vinyl top. Mike, we also have a leather cleaner and a protectant kit specifically designed for convertible top leather that's exposed to the sun. All the time? All the time. So like this Corvette, the top's down. All this leather interior here is all exposed to the sun. And what's yeah. bad about that? Well, one thing you have, the UV damage, but you're also the sweat and perspiration. Sometimes if you're wearing you know, suntan lotion, all that builds up on the leather. Okay, anywhere your skin touches. Good point. Okay, so I wear a lot of shorts. So if I'm wearing my shorts and I'm sitting in there, I have the back of my legs are sweating and it's mm -hmm. contaminating the seat there. Yes, and you want to remove that because if you don't, that's what hardens, it becomes salt, and that's what cracks your leather. Okay, I know also if, 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 if you're leaving sweat and salt down there, that attracts dirt, so you want to get that cleaned off there so it doesn't yes. attract and sort of build up on you. Exactly. So what do we have here then? We got a leather cleaner? Well, you got a leather cleaner and a leather protectant. Fine leathers today in the automobiles, the manufacturers do not want you to put oil on those seats. So we've designed a water-based product that actually dries. Can I just spray this on yeah, here Yeah, just then? spray and okay. wipe. And then it, the kit comes with an applicator and a microfiber. Yeah, so I just want to come down here. Wow, it smells good. And that's going to remove any type of perspiration 
So the back of your head, if it gets all hot, you know? Yes, the oil. Or if you had, um, say, some sort of hair product on there. It would also Hair remove spray. it. It'll take it off. But okay. what's very important is it dries very, very quickly. So if you have to run an errand in a matter of just a few minutes, you've already cleaned it and you're ready to go. Wow, that, that already looks amazingly beautiful. I'll take the dry one and kind of... And just wipe it down with it. Okay. That looks much better. So then what's the next step? Mike, when it's dry, the main thing that you want to do with leather is that you need to seal it, especially all the stitching that you have exposed to the elements. Sure. Because so that's what's going to dry in. and also be pull. So we've designed a UV protectant. The same UV blockers found in our ragtop products, we put it into a leather protectant. And that's again, you just spray it spray and just it wipe it. Okay. Got to pump it up here a little bit. And that'll get into the stitching. Okay. And with the UV blockers, it will be sealed. They're doing a good job. And again, you can see how fast that it's drying. Yeah. Wow. Unlike oil, which takes literally hours, you'll be able to do the job in five minutes. Well, you know, I, I think it's important that it's protecting it, but I also like how it's making it look really good because you've got a be very beautiful red finish on here. And before we started, this was kind of dull and lifeless. And now it looks like it's brand new again. And it looks great, and also it's great just to have in your car because if you perspire, you can always just spritz the seats, wipe it dry, and you're on your way. On your way again. Hey, thanks so much for coming by, Rick. My pleasure. Thank you, Mike. Well, Dr. Zach, thank you so much for sharing your car collection with us. Thank you for coming out. You know, of all the cars you have here, I really like the Austin Healey 100M. This thing is just sweet looking. It is also my favorite of all in the collection. You know, the beach is just right down the road. How about we take this for a spin? Let's do it. Okay. Hey, that's it for this edition of Auto Geese Watch in the Garage. Join me next week as we go out and check out some more cool cars in the garages across America.